I'm not even going to say anything for the first few seconds. Because why would I? Let's just enjoy the coast, the ambience, the music. Oh, okay. To the significant chief Indretach. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. We request that you honor your obligation to answer this call to arms against King Edelard of North Umbria. So, we could decline this, but it will cost more than we have in prestige. Instead, we're going to accept his call to banner and arms. So he now expects us to send some troops his way to help fight uh, his war with him. We're actually going to do this. We're going to raise our own personal levies, which costs us some gold to maintain them. Uh, more than we actually have, so we need to be careful. We can't have them out and about too long. So, these are going to be led by one of our generals, but not us personally, and we're going to send them north. Because fighting in a war of an ally increases our prestige. We're not going to send our retinue. Those we keep. Okay, let's see. My wife Aimlin just asked me if I'm having an affair with Setach. Her stony expression does not reveal whether she knows or it is only guessing. Right, we have a high intrigue skill. Which is interesting because we don't. So let's gaslight her. Lion Merka feel guilty for asking. That's that's a stable relationship right there. She doesn't like us very much anyway because we have acknowledged a bastard and we are an unfaithful, unfaithful lecher and an adulterer. Honestly, death is going to help her a little bit. Good, so, okay, there's two things that just happened here, All right? So, the Northumbrian army went north, and they engaged this army. We can't, sadly, see how this war, how this fight is going, how this battle is going, because our ally is not in it. They are fighting an army of some vassal, who has 400 troops. These three points, these dots here, are the flanks. So left flank, right flank, center. And they change color based on their state. So you can, even if you can't see inside what's going on, you can see whether or not the flanks are breaking or who's winning. The morale bar, the green one, indicates also how it goes. So we're going to slow down a little bit and we're going to send our troops straight into this battle in hopes that we arrive in time to reinforce them. We're already pretty far. So let's continue here. As you can see, the small army is losing hard. And actually, our ally didn't even take the opportunity to help there. So we're going to reinforce them directly. As you can see, all the flanks have been broken. The, the lower one was the defender. The upper one was the attacker. So now that we've reached our ally, to combine forces and that our army stays with his and doesn't just get lost behind and we don't have to micromanage it, we're going to follow his army. Now he has a 1473 force with our armies combined to his. So he has a good chance. Currently we're fighting a siege here, which again I can't really show for whatever reason. Oh, now I see. A siege is quite interesting in this game. Each of these um, fiefdoms has a garrison and a levy. The levy is zero currently because they have raised their armies, so the troops are not here to defend. The garrison is already pretty low. And how does the siege work? The attacker has a morale and the defender has a morale. The defender has some more modifiers, but basically what happens is each round each day or each month, I'm sure, I suppose, there are some events that's going to happen that affect either the defender or the attacker. So the attacker might lose some units and the defender might lose some units. Once the, the morale of the defender is zero, the siege is won. If there are more holdings, you have to siege each and every holding successfully until you gain control of that area. And it is basically yours. So he's sieging too. A siege we can't see. 
So let's continue. The siege is going to be done soon. We're going to talk more in depth about sieges once we do our own. But for now this is fine. Actually we're going to go ahead and lead our army ourselves. Because we have heirs anyway. We are safe and secure. Alright. Up here, an outbreak of disease in the camps outside the walls of Lothian tribe has killed many of the besiegers. So you can see, we lost some troops and the overall siege lost some troops. But there we go. The siege was won and King Urgust got some gold. Nobody got piety out of it. We have lost 77 men and they have lost everything. We have left a certain amount of troops behind to protect this newly acquired land. Not sure why this goes up to 2000 really. That's really odd. <laughs> So now he keeps besieging because there's still this. Ooh, okay. Our our heir has become a skilled tactician, which is the second best that he could have gotten. And he can marry. And he shall. So he can begin producing us heirs. Ooh, he's also shrewd, which is a really, really good skill to have, especially for Marshall. As you can see, he's already at 18. Now, what we could do, and we're gonna do it, is we're going to go ahead and replace one of our commanders with our son. So instead of us leading it, we're gonna have our son do it. He's going to lead this army. So if he dies, we still have another one. And we don't have to start the game over, well, not over, but we don't have to deal with what happens if you lose a character, which we're going to do eventually. So just, let's just wait for that. Keep an eye on our gold. We're losing some, but we have enough in reserve to hold out a little bit. Okay, our Chancellor died, which is a great big shame because he was a great guy. Now, choosing a new person for this job you might want to have the one that is best skilled but also you need to keep in mind who is a powerful vassal and they require they require a point otherwise their their relationship with you is going to be bad and since he's a bishop and paying taxes to us we want him to like us so he's terrible at diplomacy so we don't want him here he will instead become our spy master so we kick him out. Uh, fire him. He's not gonna like it, but who cares? So our spy master is going to be him. And our chancellor, therefore, can be someone who's actually kind of skilled at it. It's going to be this guy. So he goes, fabricate a claim. And our spy master. He goes, spy. No, actually, we leave him because he is our bishop and he likes us. So he's going to scheme. Defending us against enemy spies. Trying to do things to us. Now, we don't have a designated region anymore. We're going to put our bishop in again. We could put our son. But it's not really worth it. We don't need a good relationship with our kid. Our bishop, on the other hand, that we need. Our son shall be master of the horse, however. Because why not? A good relationship to our commanders is also quite worthwhile. Let's check if he pays taxes to the right person. He will in a second. There we go. However, let's still sway him. Just to ensure taxes flow in the right direction. Okay, I have a suspicion, because the enemy troops have vanished, that he might come here. So we're going to move our retinue, in case he decides to besiege us. We're going to move our retinue out of the way. Where you can't find them or squash them so quickly. 
Otherwise, we might lose them. And we don't want that. So the siege was won. And now we're moving to attack these 20 here. And it was a quick battle. And we have gotten 0.1 prestige out of it. Amazing. <laughs> Right. A large merchant caravan from distant lands has arrived at the gates of your stronghold. Their leader, a jovial man of massive girth, pleads with you in a strange accent to grant them shelter from the elements for the night. Okay, let, let them in. As evening falls, the fat merchant sits by the fire and regales with the rest of the court with stories of his travels. His appetite seems insatiable, but as you do not wish to prove a poor host, you order your servants to bring in a second serving. Tell us more of the hidden realm of Hindustan. Dawn breaks and the caravan prepares to move on. The merchant insists on leaving you a gift as a thanks for your great hospitality. He shouts a terse command in a foreign language and a young man comes forward. This eunuch will serve you well, the merchant says. His loyalty to you, his new master, shall be beyond reproach. So we get this, this guy. Who is a good spy. He's really good at this. He has some fairly decent skills. He's an impaler. So he might actually deal quite, do quite well as a, as a commander, even though his skill is not so high. We could have him or keep him or decline him. We're going to have him. So he joins our court and is available to be assigned. Now, our retinue can stay wherever it wants. It doesn't really get a penalty unless you exceed the supply limit. And he's not going to care. He doesn't like us because he wants our area. <laughs> so that's a little bit different. Right, so we're helping in the siege still. And the enemy army is here, actually. You can see in the fog of war the siege going on. Even though you don't see the troops, you know he's going to fight there. He's fighting there. And if you click in the war score, we can see the contributions. So we contribute 15% already by having sent our troops. So at the end, when, once the war is over, we're going to get a certain amount of prestige out of it. Oh, see? Now our troops are suffering. We can put them back. See the little skull here? That talks about attrition. We don't want our troops to attrition. And let's lead our own retinue. Okay. See, he's killing this small force there that was standing there for some reason. The AI isn't isn't great at battle. He's going to re-siege it. I doubt that these two armies will ever encounter each other. Doesn't look like it. And here on the map you can see Hadrian's Wall as well. I'm not sure if that's actually a modifier. It might be. A river flows. No, I don't see Hadrian's Wall as a modifier. But there it is, nonetheless. This is how far the Romans got. This is where the Romans said, no, thank you. We're not dealing with the Picts. Okay. Let's see if we can help him with something. But we would lose, lose prestige, so we're not going to do it. We already have a good enough relationship. We can choose not to do this. So, you can tell if a siege was successful by whether or not there's a sigil right in the middle here. These only show up for whoever holds it. We didn't get gold out of it. Shame. Right, so we might see a battle now. No, nope, we're not seeing a battle now. Just more sieges. Uh, you can also see this orange highlight here. Tells you what this war is about. But you can also figure it out by looking at the name of the war. So it's a de jure war over Lothian. So the Scots are attacking the Northumbrians because they think, by law, this is theirs. And they want it back. So this is what this war is about. And of course the Northumbrians are like, well, no, we disagree, strongly disagree. 
can see what's contested here. So there's a second war that the Northumbrians are fighting. So if you check them out, you can see they're fighting against the... Well, whoever this is. Um, Strathclude? Strathclude? It's these guys. And they are fighting a du jour war over some piece here. So he's fighting two wars at the same time, which makes things very difficult for him. And you can tell, actually he's fighting three wars <laughs> against this vassal of the Pictish King. And these two, this one he's winning. It's 55% in his favor. This one he's losing. It's 59% in favor of the enemy. And this one, it's kind of undecided. It's just 6% in our favor because he's retaken all the contested land. The land that isn't, which the war isn't about, weighs less in war score than the land that it's actually about. So again, the AI is a little bit weird in how it deals with war. But it's fine, as long as we have gold. Actually, we're fine with the war contribution we have done. We could pull out and he is going to lose. But let's see what he does now. Let's see this first. Maybe he goes fight. Nope. Doesn't. So, one of the siege mechanics, which is a little bit infuriating in this sometimes. Oh! My steward Domnal tells me that his efforts of praising my name and deeds have met with great success. A small army of warriors have converged from Urmheim tribe ready to serve me. I just need to make sure that I have someone to fight within a year. Lest they be troubled. So, we're happy because our friend here, he has gotten us some troops. So we want to actually select our retinue, move them out. And send them up to help in the war. So this crossing is not going to be safe because the enemy fights there. So these are event spawn troops. I have one year to get them to battle or they're going to turn on me. I could use them to attack a neighbor, but since we're already in a war, we're just going to fight that war. So adding these 300, almost 300, might give our ally the... Whoops, nope, nope, nope. Okay, we have an issue here. A big issue, actually. So, as you can see, he noticed our troops, and I, foolish as I was, thought he might move north so I could move south and through. But he didn't take that. So he turned, and he's attacking us now. Uh, let's make sure someone... Actually, no one. We don't need someone losing uh, this. Because he's not going to come. And he's going to beat them. No problem. Why oh, is only seven, sending 700 troops that are going to fight me in particular? Well, that's not going to work out anyway. Let's, let's see. So, I can't escape this anymore. This battle is going to happen, because I am going to arrive 19th of February, and he's going to arrive 23rd of February. So we might actually get away. Let's see. Let's wait and see. If not, you can tell by this that there's a battle going to happen on the 23rd of February. It might actually be the retinue that he kills, and not my troops. Oh. I misread, I'm sorry. We're moving on the 28th, not on the 19th. So he's coming five days before we leave and he's going to fight. So down here you can see the modifiers. We get a bonus because he is attacking in hills and he's also getting a malice because he's crossing a strait, which is this. So we might actually, if we unlink our armies here and send them down there, win this battle. 
because as you can see only one part of his army is red so despite it saying 1340 only 700 of these are going to fight so we're going to try let's see what happens Okay, we're getting attrition. All right, let's check this. Okay, I'm, I think I might have been wrong there. Um, yeah, now everyone is in battle, so let's turn these back again. It's not worth it. They will crash, they will be shattered, and they will retreat somewhere. They're not going to be lost entirely. So we will still be able to get some of the warriors back. 191 survived. And they're going to run back home. Which is fine. We'll just have to send them back. If they have this white line, that's a shattered retreat. And you can't control them until they return to where they want to flee to. And they generally use the closest allied region that they can find. So they have seen battle now. Not how they expected it to see. But these are really the military basics. It's a little bit more interesting if you're fighting the world yourself because you're not subject to weird decisions by the AI. Oops. For some reason we're not linked. Definitely want to be linked. So let's see if we can't get our warriors out here and help so he's sieging there so we're going to go there and let's hope he's not jumping out of his siege there all right so these are the fundamentals of war really let's see how it works out